Welcome into this very special episode of our Fallout 4 Survival Guide. This one's going to be a bit different. We're not scripting things. We're uh, looking around and uh, showing off a little bit of what we're doing with our settlements, with our home front, with everything. Now you might notice, if you've been paying attention, Jolene looks a little different. We'll get to, we'll get to that in a second. For now, oh, looks like we've got a rad storm coming in. For now, we're going to show off a little bit of what we've been doing in our off-screen time. So, what we're looking to do today is give you guys a little bit of a tour. We're going to be starting down here at Sunshine Tidings Co-op. I'm going to run you guys up to Abernathy, show you off a little bit of what we're doing there. Then we're going to go up to the Red Rocket Truck Stop. Then we're going to show you Ten Pines Bluff. Then we're going to loop back around to Sanctuary because it's our second biggest and second nicest settlement. And then we're going to head all the way down, stop off at the Starlight Drive-In so you can see that. And then we're going to go down here to Hangman's Alley, our new pride and joy. We might change that route up a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I think we'll start with Sunshine, go to Abernathy, hit Red Rocket, hit Sanctuary go across over to Ten Pines Bluff again, then we'll head down to Starlight, and then we'll hit Hangman's Alley. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what we've been doing. So starting out here at the Sunshine Tidings Co-op, we've set ourselves up a bunch of defenses around our large central area. This is the main center. We've got a bunch of houses. Let's show you guys the limits here. So these green walls are kind of our limits. You see how they stretch all around. This cover all the big houses around the sides, and this covers our big central piece here. So what this is right now is basically just an adhesive farm. We've set ourselves up a lot of potatoes, corn, and mute fruit. And these are going to be uh, crops that these people are going to be working, putting into the supply line chain, and that we'll be able to use to make vegetable starch. Vegetable starch is an excellent, excellent, excellent source of adhesive. And we're going to need that adhesive for pretty much everything we do. We actually just picked up uh, some new perks. We'll, we're going to do a little segment at the end of this to show off what we currently have for armor, equipment, and perk sets. But in here we've just got uh, a large central crafting area. We set up a few things in case we're ever out this way and we need it. And uh, we've got our weapons workbench. We've got a chem station. We've got an armor workbench, power armor station. We've got all our food set up over there. You can see off in the distance, we have guard posts set up, turrets all over the top, and a large water supply over here. We've even got a friendly double moo moo. Little Brahmin boy. Now you doing, little Brahmin boy. We've got a rad storm coming in, so I think we're going to go for a save, sleep this off, and then we're going to come back and show you guys the next part of our little uh, homeland tour for Jolene's kingdom. We are back. This is this is the Abernathy Farms. We've uh, set this up a little bit already. There's a little bit more work to be done, but we effectively took the large central area that makes up the Abernathy Farm, and we've set it up as a defensive tower. You can see turrets across the top. There's guard posts and guard stations. Before this back end was uh, cleared out previously, but we haven't done uh, too much with it. Left a few of the chairs so people have something nice to do. And set up uh, a large water supply system so that uh, this settlement is at least self-sustaining when it comes to the water. We've got ourselves a few cooking stations and chem stations. So we didn't bother setting up too much because there's a huge, huge, huge chunk of it over at Sanctuary that we've been taking care of. Since we have this station set up, we're as uh, you know, a regular old farm. We're not worrying about all the potatoes and meat fruit and corn that we have for the other places that a lot of them are doing. We're letting this settlement get us some of the other stuff just in case we ever want to do some crafting with it, etc. I'm a big fan of crafting just because it's not a lot, but as you keep doing it over the course of the game, gets you XP, helps you with your level ups, it's just a good way to complement what you're doing and stay ahead of the curve. So as you can see, we've got here some tasty tasty melons uh, we've got a single sad lonely carrot in fact i think we're going to take that carrot 
and we're going to replicate it. Let's go into our resources, pull up our food section, and plant the one carrot we have. Now he has a friend. Yay. And we've got uh, ourselves some gourds settled up over here. These gourds uh, are going to get the same treatment. He's also one. Let's also make him a friend. Where are you? There we go. It's the spirit of the season. Get us some uh, some pumpkin gourds, get things set up. We've got some melons over here. And we've got some razor grain that we're actually going to harvest and take a bit of this back with us just so we can do a little bit of crafting with it. Razor grain is good to make noodle cups. And we all like noodle cups. Hollow if you a weed. We got all uh, we got all this set up, and we've got a nice, well-stocked central area with a billion beds, just so that everyone can stay and sleep in a nice big building. And this is uh, how we set up the farms for now. Eventually, I think we're going to change this into a well, effectively a shopping center. We might extend that roof a little bit, uh, build up another layer of defenses, and fill out the food section over here a bit. But then down here, we have all of this space to work with. Look at that. Look how much space that has to work with. Those green lines are our border. So I think we might build a shopping center. Do a whole bunch of trade posts, things like that, etc. And get this all set up and running uh, in order so that we have a place that we can stop off and we have too much stuff to sell, trying to figure out what to do with it, blah, blah, blah. We'll come over here and we'll do that. Next on our Grand Wasteland Tour, we're going to be heading over that way to the east to check out what we've done with the Red Rocket Truck Stop. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Red Rocket Truck Stop. Uh, there's not uh, too much going on here, actually. We're kind of using this as a staging ground. A lot of our supply caravans come to this point or go out from this point to connect a lot of what we have in the wasteland. If we go into our map, we can actually show our supply lines. Boop, and you'll see that Red Rocket kind of serves as a main central point for a lot of them. I either connect to or go out from Red Rocket. So we've kind of just set it up to make sure it has as many beds as it needs. These are covered, right? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's good enough for you. You're serfs. You don't need to worry about it. we got a nice little crafting station that just kind of came with the place. We're not worried too much about it. We set ourselves up a decent amount of power sources, a radio beacon, some defenses up top if you see all of those turrets. And there's some over there too. We set ourselves up some guard posts, assign some guards, make sure everything is all properly set up. And you know what? These Moomoos need a home. What are we going to do with these Moomoos? So if we go into our resources, we can actually go into the miscellaneous section where we have Brahmin feed troughs. And we can set these up. Brahmin will prefer to stand near the troughs. We'll just keep them from wandering into everybody's way. See? They're already enjoying it. You're welcome, Moomoos. So since we've got all that set up, not a hell of a lot to see here. Instead, we're going to go over north. Sanctuary Hills, where we're going to show off all the hard work that we've been doing. May I present to everybody our beautiful home, Sanctuary Hills. Oh, zoomies. You see here we have actually got our supply line settlers. They actually walk through the maps connecting these stations using Pack Brahmin. So over there on our right, we've set up, uh, you can already see, a large set of power supplies and some very industrial water purifiers. Those are giving us a ton, a ton of purified water, which we can use for caps and to just, you know, keep ourselves uh, hydrated. We got some of those defenses set up at the front line, and we've got our trusty Robo Companion Codsworth set up manning the gates, keeping an eye on things. He lets us know what's going on, but this isn't really the main part of Sanctuary Hills. All the houses that you see around us, we've got a bit of furniture. We've got, uh, you know, some basic chairs, tables, TVs, beds, and just about everything here. This, however, is our main pride and joy. Let's head on in and see what we got. Boom, we built this whole warehouse from scratch. And we set ourselves up a massive amount of power generators here. And we set ourselves up 
a manufacturing plant. Now we had mentioned in our previous video that we're going to need to find a way to keep our uh, settlers in high-end gear as we're trying to build things up. Now eventually we are going to have a way to travel back here. Uh, it's an actual in-game mechanic we'll get around to eventually, but Jolene doesn't know about it yet. So you guys aren't going to uh, hear about it just yet. Some of you might have guessed what it is already. Oh, the primary feature here outside, before I forget, of that manufacturing plant is we've set ourselves up a decontamination arch. So if you look in the bottom left at my hit points, you'll see the little red bar. That's my radiation poison. It's lowering my max hit points. We walk on through here. Boom. It's done and done. Look at that, all our rads are gone. Now we set these up, so what, the way these work is we have to grab junk from the workbench, install it directly into these manufacturing points. We've got a weapon forge, an armor forge, and an ammunition plant. They'll drop those off, set them up here, and we've got our armor drop off, our gun drop off, and our ammo drop off. These can actually all be controlled from the terminal up here that we've connected to it. This will allow us to select if we want the ammunition plant control, armor control, etc. So we want the weapon forge control. What do we want? Mm, give us uh, hunting rifles. What's going to cost us to make hunting rifles? This is all the equipment we'll need. So we grab components that contain that equipment, screws, bands, uh, you know, ball peen hammers for stealing wood, whatever it is slap them in there, they'll strip the base components out of them, spit out a completed gun, gun will come down, boop, get dropped off in here, and we can pick it up. In addition to that, we've also set up a decent chunk around here. We took this main house over here that had the power armor crafting station. We're going to be taking that power armor and moving it down to Hangman's Alley eventually. No, no, Mama Murphy, I will not speak up. I built you a chair. Sit in your chair and be happy I don't give you drugs to see the future. All right, where were we? Yes, station, crafting. So they set up a whole crafting area around here. Nothing much, nothing too fancy. Most of the insides of these areas. Uh, we built a nuka station just in case we needed to do some mixing. We built a little fountain there so we can get ourselves some water. We're actually thirsty right now, so let's just boop. We had a little display case here, but we took all the books and bobbleheads because we're going to be moving them down to Hangman's Alley, which is going to be our new main settlement. And in addition to all of this, we have the pride and joy of Sanctuary Hills, our market. Uh, we're one settler short of having someone at the foods or at the clothing stall, but we've got settlers at the general goods trading store. We've got a weapon shop. Actually, have you populated your inventory yet? I haven't. Oh, you have. Oh, nothing worth it though. Sometimes they do spawn legendaries. Their loot lists are randomized. I believe mostly randomized anyways. What do you have? I'll take a look. It might be, there are some unique uh, traders. It might be them who spawn the weaponry. Uh, but I'm hoping these guys can. We got ourselves a little bar just to keep everybody happy. Boop. Look at that. And we got this whole place set up. Sanctuary Hills is kind of our main stop. We've got a large food supply set up here, potatoes, meat, fruit, and corn as well. This is all set so that uh, we can, once again, have ourselves a little adhesive farm. And to give you a closer look on what we saw from the bridge, we have all of our purified water. These things provide massive amounts of purified water. As you can see, I'm going to go into workshop mode, and you see at the top there, it has people, food, water, etc. We're getting 80 w water off of just those two sets of industrial water purifiers. Which, for us, I've already cleared this a few times, but what that means in a practical sense is that our workshop will populate with purified water. Now, there's none in here now. It's been, it hasn't been long enough since I last cleared it, but let's check... The bin of things I need to carry over. I'm gonna have to do some serious weight management to figure this all out. We've got 148 purified water sitting in here. That is ridiculous. That's good for caps, that's good for our survival. It's just all around fantastic. Hello, Carla. Trash can Carla came to pay a visit. Oh, and once again, Mumus. We have Mumus. They're chilling by their Brahmin feed troughs. And that's it for Sanctuary Hills. Next stop on our tour is going to be. 
Ten Pines Bluff. See you in a minute. May I present to you Ten Pines Bluff. Eh, no, I, I wasn't overly impressed with it either, but it is a part of our kingdom. To that end, we have a large chunk of settlers floating around. They're working on making us some um, potatoes and on making uh, some gourds and some melons. They're kind of just here to be a little self-sufficient for themselves. Uh, eventually, we will get uh, some additional resources that we can build that's going to turn this into a useful little, uh, useful little locale. But for now, they've got food, power, water, beds, and a few scavenging stations that we've assigned some settlers to. So during the day, they will work here, generate scrap, drop it off for us, and that's that. Honestly, nothing particularly special about this one, but the tour of our current kingdom wouldn't be complete if I didn't do it. You can see I made my power armor. I have loaded up on a whole bunch of resources from Sanctuary that I want to bring over to Hangman's Alley, grabbed our power armor so we could drop that off there, and uh, we're going to, before we do that, make one more quick stop at the Starlight Drive-In and show you guys what we've been up to there. Hello, welcome back. Long time no see. Uh, we've got here the Starlight Drive-In. Now, this place is unique in that it has a nice little water source. So we did what here, what we did in Sanctuary Hills, and set up some water purifiers. They're uh, not the same size as the other ones that we've done. And we've set ourselves up, uh, once again, an adhesive farm. We have mute fruit, corn, and potatoes growing here. Uh, we set this up as kind of a secondary uh, main base, if you will. A secondary sanctuary. Uh, it's relatively close to Hangman's Alley that we're going to do. Kind of a midway point between Hangman's Alley and Sanctuary Hills. So when we don't feel like making a full run all the way back to Sanctuary, we can head over to here to the Starlight Drive-In, grab what we're needing, and head back to Hangman's Alley. We shouldn't need to do that very often, but if we ever find that we really need to hunt for adhesive, etc., we've got this place on the map to come and run to. We did the same thing as well here as we did in Ten Pines Bluff and Sanctuary, set up a couple of scavenging stations. We have some settlers going through there to gather resources for us and basically just put it into our grand network. However, now we're getting to the exciting bit. Uh, before we do that, though, I need to call over Preston Garvey. Well, hold on. Let's set this up so nice and quick. We're going to do a bell. Oh, we need steel. We don't have steel. Since when do we not have steel? We always have steel. Let's scrap a fence real quick. Boop. There we go. These bells are very useful because when you ring them, it pulls all of the settlers over. Now we sent Preston Garvey here a little while back. I don't see him. We're going to go on a hunt for Preston and then we're going to come back to you guys once we're in Hangman's Alley. We are here for the biggest grand reveal of our tour. Hangman's Alley. You can already see we've made some pretty big changes here. It's uh, yeah. uh, pretty impressive if I do say so myself. We set up a nice front line with some laser turrets and some power. A little front door gate to keep uh, the riffraff out and a little guard post to do it in. And may I present to you the first floor of the alley. We're still short a few people. We've only just recently got things set up. We set ourselves up a nice little bar over in the corner here. We got a little place for our uh, serfs to come and relax. Hey, how you doing? No, you're useless. Uh, set ourselves up a little water supply in the back here with a power station and a radio beacon just to keep this place self-contained in, uh, in the water loop. Since any settlement that doesn't have the water that it needs to sustain itself is going to pull from our other settlements that have an excess. And those excesses, we want those to just keep adding purified water to their respective workshops so that we can collect the resources. We got some more guns over here. We got a second entrance to the alley. 
boop right up this way and when you come in you'll notice there's actually a second floor so we have a weapons and armor shop down here we have some scrap stations a general goods store and a clothing store over here and then up on the second alley if we could get ourselves turned right around we have the living quarters as well as a nice little garden with some oil lamp posts or growing potatoes meat fruit and adhesive so that we have a source uh sorry potatoes meat fruit and corn so that we have a source to make adhesive and get all of that set up while we're in the main central area of town there's a third entrance right over there with some turrets watching that as well and our power uh, set up for the front door laser turrets and right here we set ourselves up a nice little elevator the second floor is just for oh hi dog no no be careful be careful boy it's okay, it's okay. we're gonna go get dog meat come on come here boy yeah there you go good boy good boy yeah let's go see your new home he got lost for a little bit oh no oh well okay so we set ourselves up here a little bit we have a vault tech population management system this will actually allow us to just control what our settlers are doing from the terminal. Little chemistry station that we set up here. And a little cooler to place all of our uh, resources in. We got ourselves a little power generator to keep everything running. And right here we have a firework mortar. This means that we can actually craft fireworks that will allow us to control the weather. Clear rad storms, make it rain, etc. Up here we have our crafting station. We set ourselves up uh, for our power armor as well as a nice little weight bench. And a pommel horse. Huh, let's get your workout in. Booyah. We actually set these up because in addition to giving our settlements a little bit of, you know, a happiness boost from having some recreational tools around they also give us an agility and strength boost you'll see in the top left corner when we use it for using the equipment yeah get them gains that's what we're here for and then the final stop on the tour our home we decided that since we're going to be here, we might as well be comfy and set ourselves up a little queen of the castle room. We've got our bedroom and bobblehead stand over here. We'll set these up here. So let's see, what do we have? Perception and repair bobbleheads. Boom, small collection, but we'll get more as time goes. We've got ourselves a magazine rack with all the magazines we've picked up so far. Let's drop off a few of them. So what else do we have? Three more issues of Grognak the Barbarian, an issue of Hot Rodder, an issue of the Massachusetts Surgical Journal, an issue of Robco Fun, that actually came with a Pit Boy video game, an issue of Taboo Tattoos, which, I mean, if that doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. An issue of the U.S. Covered Operations Guide and two issues of the Wasteland Survival Guide. Throw them all in, they populate in, and we can see all the books that we've picked up. We got ourselves set up a Nuka Mixer in the kitchen over here. Set ourselves up a little working cooking stove. A sink that we can eat and drink from. And an ice cooler to store all of our excess food and water. We got Dog Meat his own little uh, house over here, and we set ourselves up a nice little chair that we can sit in to look down. Ooh, that was my face. And stare at the surfs. Yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking to you. Go back to doing things for me. And this is Hangman's Alley. Or, as like I said before, I've taken to calling it 
the Queen's Corner. We got our settlers running around getting our jobs done for us. We've got some leftovers from the raiders that were here before. That's fine. I like the decor. It keeps things nice and uh, neat and tidy. And we got a few different uh, changes. I don't know if any of you have noticed while we were in Diamond City picking up some supplies and materials. We picked up a little bit of a change. We got a haircut. In addition, we also got, let's take them off, the sunglasses, a tattoo. We'll stand over here where we've got a, a light. We haven't hooked up the power for the other one yet. So we got us a nice little purple punk haircut going. And we set ourselves up a tattoo on our eye. Well, just a little something to mark Jolene's time in the wasteland. And we've got a few other things. So this is our basic uh, outfit right now. Just to give you a little bit of idea on what we're rocking as Jolene. So this is our basic combat outfit. Sea captain's hat sunglasses, military fatigues, and a few different pieces of armor. The hat and glasses, the hat gives us plus two to our endurance, the glasses gives us plus one to our perception, and the army fatigues that we're wearing give us plus one to our strength and agility. All very important stats for what we're trying to do. Give us extra carrying capacity, give us a little more hit points, let us sprint longer, give us more vats time, give us more accuracy with our gear. Very good. We set ourselves up on our left leg and right leg with some deep pocketed polymer combat armor, which gives us extra carrying capacity and a fair amount of damage and energy resistance. We have a champion left arm that we picked up in the last episode, gives us plus one strength and endurance. And while running around, we found a champion right arm for plus one agility and perception as well. We also picked up a lucky metal right leg. We might go ahead and slap that on our uh, right leg just to give us an additional plus two bonus to our luck but honestly i think we might not luck is best for critical hits and we're really not playing into that we are however going to hang on to it for a little while might come into play later down the line but it's that's what we're rocking right now we threw some halloween orange on uh, some of our armor pieces just to get it looking pretty and uh good for ourselves and in addition to that, we also have the Wastelander's chest piece as our main chunk of armor. Gives us a f decent amount of energy resistance and physical damage resistance. Could be better, but it grants us plus one to our agility and our perception scores. And it has the Biocom Mesh mod, which means that any chems that we take last 50% longer. And chems are ridiculously strong in this. So that's what we have as our regular combat for Jolene, and we actually have a couple different outfits for her. We have our bartering outfit with a red dress for a plus two to charisma, a formal hat for plus one to charisma, and some fashionable glasses for another plus one to charisma. This is Jolene, the barter queen. Look at that. Look at that. The pizzazz, the presence the caps and as well we have an outfit for crafting uh it's not much you get a little bit of bonus experience for having higher intelligence when crafting but since we tend to do a fair chunk of it in once we picked up an ushanka hat i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right for a plus one bonus to intelligence as well as a lab coat for a plus two bonus to our intelligence so when we're crafting at home getting our science on being a nerd but the best kind of nerd. This is the outfit that we wear. And that's Jolene the Plunder Queen. We'll give you guys one more quick look at a few of the things that we have here in terms of our perks. We're just going to equip everything so that you can see what we're running around with on a day-to-day -day basis. And kitchen's hat and sunglasses. There we go go over to our perk chart so with our regular combat uh, equipped we have eight strength nine perception six endurance six charisma seven intelligence eight agility two luck when we're in our charisma outfit this will go up to ten a few of our other stats will drop and when we're crafting 
this will go up to 9 for our intelligence, and a few of our other stats will drop. But on a basic day-to-day, -day, running around, looting, crafting, doing our uh, regular things, this is the stat score we're working with. And these are our perks. We have three ranks in the armor tree, which we actually haven't used yet. On our next episode, we're going to do some crafting to make sure that our gear is in tip-top shape and condition. We have three ranks in riflemen. So attacks with non-automatic rifles do 60% more damage and ignore 20% of the target's armor. We have demolition expert. Our explosives do 75% more damage and affect a larger area with three ranks in it. We have two ranks in Lone Wanderer, giving us a lot of damage resistance and improved carrying capacity. We have two ranks in Local Leader, so we can set up our supply lines and set up our workshop settlements uh, shops. Under the Intelligence Tree, we have three ranks in Gun Nut to make better guns. We just got that third rank. We haven't used that yet either, so Armor and Gun Nut are going to see some use in the next episode. We have one rank in Scrapper, giving us some uncommon components like screws, aluminum, and copper when scrapping weapons and armor. We're going to pick up another rank in either that or in Scrounger as our next perk. We spent a few rounds putting a few points into Agility. We're eventually going to move into some of these Stealth Tree items, but for now we're still doing okay being able to run around without having to worry too much about stealthing before we get into combat. We've got two ranks in science so that we can get high-tech mods for uh, energy weapons and high-end pieces of armor and equipment. One rank in chemist. I don't think we'll go any further than this. Any chems we take last 50% longer. Yay, fantastic ability. The main reason that we like it is because there's a few uh, chems and beverages and things like that that were locked behind chemists when we, uh, that we really wanted to be able to craft. And uh, outside of that, like I said, agility we boosted a little bit, haven't picked any of the perks we want from it yet, and luck we have one point in Scrounger to find more ammunition and containers. This is going to keep us in the ammo we need for our weaponry, and speaking of which, our basic weapons that we're using right now, we have a few in our inventory just because we were bringing them back, but our day-to-days are the Righteous Authority with its very purdy bat skin, figure we stay in season. We've set that up as kind of like our mid-range, all-around go-to weapon. We've got our Rapid Powerful Sniper Rifle. Legendary with 25% faster fire rate, 15% faster reload that we found on a random legendary enemy we were fighting. We gave it a nice Halloween bat skin. It's our long-range, high-power, high-damaging sniper rifle. And our close-range weapon of choice, the Powerful Combat Shotgun. Threw some tunnel snake paint on there because tunnel snakes rule. Tell me in the comments if you get the reference. And this is just kind of our close range, all purpose general killer. Great for ghouls. Loves it a ghoul. And that's everything that we're rocking. We're doing some grenades as well, frag grenades, baseball grenades, etc. And since we got ranks and explosives, we did pick up a fat man. We're going to drop that off. We don't know. We don't know. That might come into use later. We've got ranks and explosives. We could get some damage out of it. But for now, that's all we have. So Jolene the Plunder Queen is about done for the night. It is very late. She wants to go to bed. She's going to hop into a brand new Vault 111 jumpsuit. And we're going to call that quits for the night. Thank you guys so much for coming on along on our little tour of the home front. And hopefully you'll stick around to see Jolene turn the rest of the wasteland into her kingdom. You guys take care and have yourselves a fantastic night.